All right. Well, hello everyone. Um, my name is Alex. I am the uh, co-creator and uh, lead designer for Toonkins Virtual World, um, among other things. But currently working on Toonkins, and uh, I've been asked a lot about how I design things, what programs I use. So I thought I'd make a little video here on uh, just that. So um, let's kind of dive right in. Obviously, this is a character that. Um, we are thinking about using, not sure yet, it's just something that's in development, obviously. Uh, it's something that I'm still working on. You can see the overall shape came from our penguin design. Um, it doesn't really have arms yet, but uh, I'm just about ready to do our shading. Um, I won't really do a, a how to draw uh, a character uh, video just yet. I, I, you know, This is something that was just kind of asked of me just recently. So um, I'm going to show you how I do the, uh, the shading for uh, our, our characters and our, our, our items and things of that nature. Uh, I'm using Affinity Designer. Uh, you don't need to use Affinity Designer. Use whatever you have. Um, some of the things are going to be similar. Some of the things are going to be different. But uh, use the tools that you have at hand. Uh, I will tell you that Affinity Designer, um, though it's not the most expensive um, option, is definitely also not free or, or inexpensive. So, um, you know, if you're going to use it, definitely... Uh, you know, if you're gonna buy it, definitely use it. Um, they aren't spos sponsoring me; they're not paying for this. But I will say that uh, Affinity Designer definitely has been a game changer for the way that I design um, a lot of things. So uh, I'll, I'll show you what I mean here by that. Um, basically, what what they have that is available is, say, I take this shape, and that's all it is—is is just a, a curve. Um, I'll go in here into the layers, and I'll, I, I created a layer, and I put it right into this shape and what I mean by that is if I take say this pencil oops, I take this pencil here and I decide to draw it's gonna draw right inside of it it's not gonna allow me to draw outside which is really really helpful when you do shading because uh, unlike other programs if if you're using like a brush tool for example you've got to be really careful that you know you're you're shading just along the edge and things of that nature. Uh, in this way, it's really, really easy. And uh, one of the things that I like to do, um, you know, because I, I have to do a lot of graphics for uh, a lot of different things, including for this game. And so I, I like to be quick. And um, for example, this is something that you can do extremely easily. Uh, all I've done is I've taken a, a sphere, put it into um, the shape, cut out a section of it, kind of like a crescent. Uh, that's going to be where I want my shadow to be, right? I'm going to make it dark. I can lower the opacity. This actually is the look that we used for Kingdom Island. Uh, it was a very, uh, almost like a flat design uh, with shadow uh, element uh, look. Now, we wanted to be a little bit different, so, uh, you know, a little bit more 3D-ish with our characters. So what I uh, did then is just kind of soften that edge with a blur. And all of a sudden, you really start getting this definition of a shadow. Uh, that's just one of the things that you can do. That's just one of the features that I use. Um, you can also go in here, and there's an effects tab, and you can add an inner shadow to it. Um, use the offset tool here. Um, wherever you're going to want your shadow. Kind of a hard shadow right now, but you go into the tools here. See if we can soften that up a little bit. There we go. Just, just slight, slight shadow. There we go. So you know, you you really just start kind of playing with it and seeing where you want your light to be, um, and it just starts coming to life really, really, well, you know kind of easily and it's just because of the tools that we have um, I'm gonna go ahead and do the, um, the middle here and, and what I do is I'm copying this this layer here I'm just gonna change it to a different color so we can see what we're see what we're looking at I'm gonna copy and paste it again I'm gonna shrink it just a tad that the color there. select the two and we're going to subtract and that just kind of gives me that little outline. And what I'm interested in doing is just having like a little outer, uh, outer shadow. And again, just lower the opacity, and then 
use a blur. Uh, now you can see this is kind of outside of that, and all we need to do is drop that into that uh, that layer, and there you have it. And, and once again, you can take a sphere like that, take that away, and do the same same effect to it, and drop it into drop it into the belly. So that's a little bit too harsh for me. I actually don't really like the uh, overall shape, so I'm going to just adjust that. And the nice thing is you can you can be pretty sloppy with it. Um, you know, I'm not sitting there trying to go around the whole curve and things like that. You know, you can see out here it's just kind of like a little mess, but it's all hidden inside. You know, it's kind of like a little uh, little cookie cutter. Um, so that's that's another method of doing it. The other way that uh, that you can go about it is uh, Affinity has different personas, and so I can go in here with a pixel brush, and I can basically just paint within. If I add a layer in here, add a layer right in there. I can just paint within the shape. And the nice thing about this is that. I can save this as a raster image or as a vector image. It's not going to, um, it's kind of combined. That's something that Affinity does that other programs don't. So I can I can do the same if I want to use my paint brushes, that's what you know, I'm, I'm comfortable in. You know, I can, I can do that. Um, I can also put effects on the brush, you know, lower that down just a little bit. If I want like a little bit of you know, that grainy look, um, that's something that you can do. Go back in here. Uh, we can add an inner shadow to this. There we go. And so you just kind of start getting the idea, and you just have to tweak, um, you know, what you like and don't like about it. Um, just add different elements to it. Um, you know, just kind of play around. But that's that's really the gist. Um, if, if you use again a new designer or not, it's really up to you. I highly recommend it. It's a program that you're going to use for a very long time, but if you don't, you can still do these things on other programs. You just have to really figure out um, how you're going to go about it. But, you know, I'm not sitting there with a paintbrush and, and, and doing my shading. I'm using shapes because, uh, for me anyway, it's just easier for me to do this than to sit there and have to repaint uh, an entire stroke um, for the shading. So, uh, I mean, and, and you can even you know, do multiple layers, uh, you know, to, to give it a better effect if that's something that you like, something like that. But uh, anyway, um, I'm going to go back into uh, designing, and I hope this is helpful, or at least so you can see the insight of what uh, what we're doing in the development, and uh, maybe this character makes it in, maybe it doesn't, that would be up to you. Uh, we're going to put it up for a vote uh, after we launch, so I uh, hope to see you when we launch, uh, probably within the next week or so hopefully, and um, we'll see you around. Thank you.